Um, so our next speaker, Tim McDonald, this is his first conference talk. So we've had a few first timers. So give him a round of applause for that. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. I think I just swore. Hopefully that wasn't recorded. Okay. Uh, okay. So we are talking about expressive eloquent collections. All right. So I've wasted a bunch of time already. So let's just dig into this. So as I said, bird pooped on my laptop. That was fantastic. Uh, when we're talking about expressive eloquent collections, what we're talking about, let's break it down. So we've got support collections. They're kind of what you get when you use the collect method, just that helper method. It's kind of the, the base thing that does, it's our super array. Okay, and then we've got eloquent collections, and they are in the eloquent namespace, and we get those out whenever we do a query uh, against the database with eloquent, and we get a, a list of users, we have an eloquent collection that wraps that up. And the reason for that is that it has some stuff under the hood to kind of better deal with eloquent, like when you're comparing things and, and doing all sorts of other stuff uh, with eloquent. And then, breaking it down even further, expressive, well, I want to make those pipelines that we use with collections more expressive. Uh, and thus, expressive eloquent collections. So this is about kind of why I wanted to do this in the first place, like, um, and then also kind of the journey uh, to getting to that point, and then the things that kind of came once I had implemented that. So let's uh, have a look at this, which is now telling you that it actually is not about expressive eloquent collections at all. And this talk really, for me, uh, while I was building it, I realized that it was more about kind of rethinking what Eloquent even is. So when I think of Eloquent, I'm going to talk a little bit fast, sorry, because I've got to catch up some time that I just wasted earlier. Um, so I'll, I'll try and slow down a bit later. Uh, and now I'm talking about how I've wasted time, wasting more time. Um, so what is Eloquent? So when I think of Eloquent, I think of the model, or I think of a query. Right? And I, I feel like that's kind of what I've always thought about when I think about Eloquent, because, well, we're working with models, and we put scopes on the models, and so when we're doing a query, we'll like type the model name, and then, you know, where this or whatever, get or paginate. So we're always working with this model and the queries, and then the collections kind of, I don't know, I always feel like they're kind of this, this outside thing that we don't really give much love to or think about very much. They just kind of wrap up the models, and when we say eloquent, for me, I'm always thinking about the model, but I don't think that's really the case, but we'll come back to that. So expressive eloquent collections. My goal was to make collections, when I was working with them in controllers or jobs or wherever I was doing that, more readable, okay? We love readable code. Uh, I just wanted to make them more expressive. And the result was actually a bunch of other things. So we got readability, which was great, but then we had a place to kind of extract repeated logic. We could add uh, improved sorting methods, thin out our models, and a bunch of other things. So we're going to kind of step through all these as we go. So my name is Tim, a software developer, musician, and as I was talking about doggos, I love doggos. As I was saying, everyone should like tweet a picture of their furry friends or their turtles or whatever, and hashtag LaraConAU, because I want to see all your pets. Uh, I've already made other people show me at the after party last night. That's basically all I did. Um, also do some Laravel and PHP, uh, and I'm really stoked to be here. Um, I can't believe I'm like standing up with all these amazing talkers. Um, I write some stuff on my blog, and I've written some stuff for Laravel News, so if any of this is interesting, you might want to check those stuff out if you kind of come across those and are really super bored. This is my doggo. This is Taz. Round of applause for Taz. Yeah. So he's a good boy. Uh, and I'm sure after I've shown this, he'll let me take him for a walk, so that's good. Uh, so why I wanted to Im improve readability. So when we start up a new Eloquent application, we get the model, right? And what language does this model talk? Well, out of the box, it's got update, create, delete. It's kind of got the language of uh, the database, right? Because that's what it is. It's, it's a record in the database, so we want to be able to manipulate that, and that's kind of where Eloquent is great. But I find that when I'm developing my app further and further, the language of the model doesn't stay as that, all right? It becomes problem sp space specific. So we start to kind of add methods to the model that are around the people and the problems that we're trying to work with. Um, so we're no longer saying update and delete. We're, we're doing more expressive things. Uh, and just to give you an example of what I mean by that, we've got an invoice. And the people in accounts, they call you up and say, hey, Tim, you know that invoice? Is that payment not equal to null? No, they don't, right? <laughs> Because that means nothing. That means something to us. But even, even like knowing what null is and what not equal equal to means, like there's still a bit of overhead with these kind of like checks where you've got to go like invoice payment not equal to null. Oh right, yeah, because there's no payment. Okay, I get that. 
I'm smart. Um, so we wrap it up in invoices paid, and everyone's really happy. So if the invoice is paid, go have a party or something. I don't know, something great. You've got money, it's good. Um, so we do these for a lot of reasons, uh, and one of them is, I don't know who said this, but you know, code is read more than it is written. So we might write this once, but it's going to be read a lot of times. And we need to remember who is reading that as well. It's not always going to be the person who wrote this code. Okay, so if you're writing this first line, like you're like, yeah, you, you get payments, you get when they're not equal to null means it hasn't been paid, that's totally cool. But what about someone who's just come on board? And obviously this is a pretty simple example, but say we've got a few checks in this, in this if statement, you know, it starts to get a bit more complicated, so we want to make it easier for newcomers, uh, make it more accessible to them, uh, and newcomers to the project, and that means also experienced and up-and-coming developers as well. I think it affects everyone, really. Uh, less overhead is always better. And another thing to note with this is, I feel like whenever I go to, or previously, whenever I would want to add a domain-specific domain method, it always went on the model without me really considering, like, is that the best place? Like, where else could I put it? I don't know, but I just put it on the model. That's where it goes. Great. So let's take a look at Carbon. So Duat is a Carbon instance, and Carbon works in the space of dates, right? So I'm sure a lot of us have used Carbon. Uh, they've got a method on there, so I can read this out and say, if the invoice due at LT now. Great. We all know what that means. But what does that mean? Like, when you say less than now and you're working with dates, like less than, greater than, I always get confused, like, what's on what side? It, it's just too much for me to handle. So Carbon came along and said, we can make this more expressive. We can add a is past, right? Because they can make that much nicer for us to work with. So now we can say, if the invoice due at is past, Okay, we know due out to date. Great, so we know that the date is past. And that's much more expressive. But Carbon can't take that down to our domain. They, that's their domain. They've made it as expressive as they can. So they've got is past, is future, is today, things like that. So what we do is we might wrap it up into a method. I'm sure we've all done something like this, where we say invoice is overdue. And then, that way we've kind of brought that down into our domain language. And we're always striving for expressive code. Um, well, I, I know I personally am in my projects, and I think that's a really nice example of that. So let's talk about the language of a collection. Am I talking too fast? Cool. Um, so the language of a collection. So a collection in our applications, I find personally in mine, I, I'm talking from my experiences, so I'm just going to say we, but really I just mean me. Um, so the language of a collection, I find that we usually just leave it as those as a generic set of items, okay? so. Having a look at here, this makes total sense. Like, this, these are those generic item methods, okay? So we just want to know if this collection contains this item, or we want to know if this collection is empty. And this kind of reminds me of the model methods, update, delete, create. You know, out of the box, we've got these things to work with, these tools, for what they were built with, but we do more to the model. So for me, I never have a set of generic items. I've always got an eloquent collection of a specific model, you know, is it invoices? Is it users? I don't know, but it's not generic items. So that brings me to my question, which is if eloquent models speak the domain language and eloquent collections only contain eloquent models, then why don't eloquent collections speak the domain language as well? Question. Um, and what we'll soon find out is that the collection kind of is tied to the model, and the model is tied to the collection, um, and so when I was talking earlier um, about kind of rethinking what Eloquent is, just kind of keep this in mind that these things are, they're united, they're one thing. Okay, so moving on to, let's talk about collections and how we work with collections. And we are like getting to actually doing the expressive collection bit, I promise. So, we've got a bunch uh, of stuff happening here, so what are we doing? Okay, so we look at this and we go, right, we've got some invoices, we want to know if every single one of those returns true for invoice is paid. Okay, so that's a bit to read, a bit to understand, it's not super complicated. Um, and then we know if all the invoices are paid. And this reminds me of Carbon's less than, like we're right at the top of that kind of three steps. This is the very top, the basic way that we can work this out. And just like Carbon made it more expressive or easier to read, Laravel has also done that for us. So they've introduced higher order collection proxies, and I say introduced like it's just been, hap been done, but it's, they've been around for a while. And that means we can just call this. So we've got invoices every is paid. And that's pretty readable. Like, that's, that's great. I love that. That is all we really need. We don't need to change anything to make that more expressive, I don't think. 
I, w- I would be happy with that. And this is kind of that next step down, right? So this is, this is like carbons is past. They've, uh, Laravel's made it much easier for us to check out. Um, but it hasn't kind of brought it down to our domain. But because it is readable, I'd probably leave that. That's fine. But it's not always like that. For example, what if we want to know if they're all paid or the payment is currently processing? Well, I mean, we could do invoices every, is paid every. No, we can't because we're doing an or, so we can't even do that. Okay, so moving on. How do we create our own extended collection to kind of deal with this and make it more expressive? First thing we want to do is create an invoice collection. So we want to do this for our invoice class. So we create an invoice collection, and it is extending the eloquent collection class. Remember, eloquent collection, not support collection. Then we need to wire it up. We need to make sure that whenever we run a query, we get our results already wrapped up in this collection. I don't want to be like getting the results and then like wrapping it in the collection later. I want to make that all happen under the hood. And Laravel makes that super easy. On the eloquent model, uh, there's, a, there's a method called new collection. And what that allows us to do is return uh, how we want our collections from the database to be returned, which in this case, we want it wrapped up in our new collection. So now, once we've done this, whenever we get a result, we've got our invoice collection, everyone's happy. So this is what I was talking about, how the kind of the higher order proxies start to fall apart. So we've just kind of gone back to that example, but I've just thrown a little bit more spice in here just to make it a bit bit harder to kind of understand. So we want to know if all all these invoices are paid or the payment is processing. So there's a bit to kind of understand here. But what we can do uh, is we can kind of take this logic Steal it from there. So we've probably got this maybe in a controller, and then we've got it over here in a job or something like that. So we're going to take it, and we're going to chuck it on this collection class, wrap it up in a nice method name, just like we do with models when we've got these kinds of things. And now, if invoices are all paid and processing, easy. So that's our collection of invoices, and we can just check it all with that method. So that was me kind of getting to readability, right? Um, And this is nothing groundbreaking. This is just something I wanted to kind of try out and see how it went and see what I thought of it. But it turns out that that was just the beginning. So I started doing this in all my projects. And as we do when we're like, oh, this thing is cool, you just go, I'm doing it for everything, no matter what the circumstances. So I was just like, head first, dive in, let's go. Um, So I did it for everything. Like every model had a collection. And I I wouldn't do this now. I would do this when it was suitable. And if you decide to do this, uh, you know, obviously decide when it is suitable. Um, So these are kind of small wins that I got after implementing this pattern. Um, so let's kind of go through some of those things. I think the first one is, is the most obvious one, which is extracting repeated logic. So we've got this little method here. We're kind of calculating the total amount of all these invoices. We do that over in a controller. We do it over in a job. And then we've got to do it again. And we think, well, we've definitely got a pattern here, right? So why don't we just extract this out to the go now method total cost? Nice and easy. And this gives us. Uh, All the benefits of, you know, having dry code is that we've got one place to change the logic. So if we decide we're going to change the the money class that we're working with or how we're uh, totaling the costs, boom, just go into that collection and adjust that. And it brings all that code repeated everywhere into the one place, which we really like. Okay, I think I can start to slow down a little bit now. Default and improved sorting methods. So whenever possible, uh, I always like to do as much of the sorting of the records in the database because that's what it's really good at. No point. If I can just get it in memory and it's in the right order, lovely. I'd rather do that. But it's not always possible. Sometimes there's certain conditions that you want to do in memory. Uh, or you want to use something like the similar text algorithm to kind of sort by relevance. So in this example here, we've got a user query. We're going to run a search over it for a search term. You know, someone's typed in someone's name into a search box on our website. We want to get all those results. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sort those results by relevance. And we're going to check that with perhaps the similar text algorithm. We might do some weighting. Like there might be, This is a pretty basic example. But we might do some weighting to say, right, whatever they typed in, if that's like the start of someone's name, they're going to get a few more points in this kind of sorting algorithm, just to make it more relevant so that the, the thing that they're probably searching for comes right at the top. Uh, and I know performance, all good, known set of users, everything's fine. Um, So naturally, uh, like we have with the other things, we're going to extract that out to a method that's nice and easy to read uh, and it kind of encapsulates that logic. And that means we haven't got that in our controllers and everywhere else. Um, But what's nice about this 
is that this is now reusable, right? So the other things we've looked at have kind of been specific to invoices, but, but sorting by relevance of a string, that kind of could probably be used in a few places. So if you've got a bunch of posts that you want to be able to do that to, a bunch of users you want to be able to do that to, you can now put this sort by relevance method on either a base collection class in your project that kind of extends the uh, illumin illuminate um, eloquent collection, or like JMac proposed, like using traits to kind of compose those instead, so you could whack this in a trait and just use it on the collections that you wanted to. So that's kind of cool. This is probably my favorite, which is thinning models. So who likes to have big models? Do we all have models and we all put lots of stuff on them? I know I do. Like we've got accesses, we've got methods, uh, we've got uh, mutators when we're setters, uh, we've got queries, we put all sorts of things on our models, right? And they can get quite big, and that's totally fine. That's not a problem. But it is kind of nice sometimes having thin models. So what I'm proposing is that having these eloquent collections actually gives us a way to move logic that's currently on the model out of the model onto the collection. And that might feel a bit weird just hearing that, but I actually think it makes total sense. Uh, and let me show you why. So we've got a bunch of users, okay? Maybe every night we're going to... We're going to run over through all these users and we're going to send off a notice, uh, uh, an overdue notice to them. Um, so that's fine. That works totally fine. Obviously, we can also do the same thing we've seen where we create a collection method called users send overdue notices. You know, that's on the collection. Um, but what I notice about this is that we're always batch processing this, right? We're never doing it really with one user. As a general rule, we're always doing it with a bunch of users. Okay, so we're batch processing. That's important. Um, but occasionally, yeah, occasionally we might do it on one model. Like maybe someone didn't get the invoice and they want to log into their account and say, send me that overdue notice again, or we want to do it on the command line, something like that in Tinker. Okay, so what we want to do is move the logic from the user over to the collection. And I think this is good um, because this is something Laravel actually does under the hood as well. Um, and let me show you something that they do. Uh, in Laravel, which is with a collection of users, if you want to load missing relationships, generally you want to do that because you want to avoid like an N plus one. Like you're like looping over and all of a sudden you're hitting, you want everyone's posts, but you haven't loaded those into memory yet. Um, so you're going to hit a problem. So the load missing method is available on the collection. And what that'll do is that'll load up all those missing posts into memory. So you don't hit for every post, uh, uh, for every user, you don't hit kind of uh, another database request every time. It'll just get them all, chuck them on the users, everyone's happy. But sometimes you might want to do it on the model as well. So if you've got a user and you're like, oh, I don't know if in this particular part of the code base that relationship is there, I'll hit load missing because load missing won't actually do any database work if they're there. And if it's not there, it'll get them. So that's quite nice. But below here, so, okay, so point being, load missing is on both the collection and the model. Below is the example of what the load missing method looks like on the model. And I think this is kind of cool. So, this method is creating a new collection from its, from, so this is on the model, so it's calling that new collection class we saw earlier. And then it's calling load missing on the collection. So, Laravel, you know, this is something that you generally do with a batch. Uh, as like a batch process with lots of things. So it kind of makes sense that it's not on the model and that it's on the collection, because that's where you're doing it, so that's where you'll probably look for it, but they've given you the ability to use it on an individual model as well, which is kind of cool. I dig that. Uh, of course, sorry, just to come back to this, of course, you know, we would hope to have it already loaded by doing the initial query, but that's just not always the case. Testability. So this is something else uh, that we gain by doing this. So if we've got all these collection pipelines in our controllers, then we're probably going to do like a HTTP test to kind of test that this collection is pipeline is doing what we want it to do. Uh, and that's totally fine. And one good thing about doing this pattern is that we can extract it out to a unit test. So we're, smaller, uh, we're testing a much smaller uh, piece of code. And that way we can just kind of leave our HTTP test to just those happy paths and we can test all our edge cases with something like this. Reducing database queries. So, we've got a bunch of notifications. Say we've got 100 notifications. And we want to make sure that they've all been marked as red. The user's just logged in, they've seen their notification list. We just want to mark them all as red now in the database. So, we're going to do this higher order proxy. We're going to say, right, loop over all these notifications and update them all. Problem being, 
course, we're going to hit the database 100 times. And another thing is, if it takes a little while, like say this takes 100 seconds, now it's going to change every time we hit the database, right? So then we go, all right, well, what we'll do is we'll just do up a query instead and we'll hit the database once, because we're very sensible developers. So notification query, we're going to work out, we're going to target all the, uh, all the models in that collection, and we're going to update the Red app. Great. Now, they've all got the same Red app. They've all been marked, one query. But now all our notifications in memory <coughs> don't have that Red app set. It's still set to null. So something that I've been doing with my collections is adding this kind of helper method. Uh, and this is to get a query that targets everything in the collection. So you've got a collection of users, and you want to you know, you want to say, right, I want to target all these users and do a query. So we'll create a query. We want to check that it's empty first, because if we don't do that, then we're going to actually target like every user and or every notification, and we don't want that. So we'll just kind of return like this null object that's just going to respond to anything, and it'll just at the end of the day return an empty notification collection uh, if we're doing that. But really, the exciting bit is the return here. So we're going to return a notification query where the key is in this collection. So then when we want to mark all our notifications as red, we can get the current time, we can run one query to update all 100 notifications, and then in memory, we can just loop through and set that attribute. So now we've got the best of both worlds where one database query and all our in-memory models have been updated as well. Uh, you could, you know, if you're doing this quite a bit, you might extract these kind of middle lines here up to, up, uh, into an update helper method on the collection. So you can just say, you know, update red at to now, and it'll just do both of those things. Uh, and I really like that because then we can just say notifications, right, someone's read them all, mark them all as red, and that'll all happen under the hood for us. So it's not really reducing database queries because we're smart and wouldn't loop over all those things, am I right? Yeah. Uh, so it's really just cleaning them up, but that's all right. Sharing a filtering API with eloquent scopes. I think I've said I really like this one about all of them, so I really like this one. Um, so what I'm talking about here is when we want to filter a collection uh, and when we want to kind of filter our database results. So just a quick little tangent. Um, something I like to do is always prefix all my queries with where. I feel like it creates a much more consistent API because on the collection, we've got where, say, name is equal to Jasmine, uh, then on the database query, we can also do, you know, where name is equal to Jasmine. Then we might have an explicit scope on our model, where name, or alternatively, we don't, and we actually use Laravel's uh, dynamic where, so it'll actually do uh, where that first line by just calling where name, and we don't have to do any work. You might like that, might not. Uh, or where not null. And you can see here that they all start with where, like all this filtering that happens on the query all starts with where, same with the collection. So then we come along and we're at, we write our user query, and we go, where name is Jasmine, where not null, confirmed at email. But then I find that a lot of people, when they create a query, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, like, I just have noticed that we just go active, you know, w instead of where active. And it kind of creates this inconsistent API with filtering. So that's just kind of a side thing. So, which gives you some context into why I'm doing it here. Uh, so. Uh, we're talking about a consistent API for filtering. So this is on our notification uh, class, our eloquent model. You can see that we've got a scope here called where unread. And then down below, you can see us using it. So we've got notification query, where unread, do all our other stuff that we're going to do. Okay, so this is how we might do it on a collection. So we're just going to create a collection method called where unread, do the same thing essentially, but for in-memory stuff. And then we'll be able to work with that collection, which creates some nice symmetry when we have those together. Encapsulation. So this is an interesting one because, in a way, what we're really doing is exposing all this information. I mean, this, all, all this knowledge about the model is already exposed in the controller where we've got our pipelines. Because remember, that's kind of what we're doing, is we're bringing all this stuff that's literally in our collections, uh, pipelines, in our controllers and stuff from our controllers to a dedicated area. Um, but what you could argue is that, well, now you're just exposing all this stuff to the collection, so how is that really encapsulation? But I think there's actually a bit of a chicken of the egg situation uh, when it comes to these, because the collection knows so much about the model, the eloquent collection. Um, their functionality is already intertwined, like we saw with the load relationships, uh, the load missing relationships. Like, 
the model uses the collection to do it. And the collection only exists because there's a model. So they're kind of intertwined. They're, they're kind of a single entity in a way. They just, they're just different files. So, like, what is Eloquent? Which is kind of what I've been thinking this whole time while I've been giving this talk and, like, preparing it. And, like I said, like, I don't think it's the model or the query builder. I think it's all of these things. You know, if there's an attribute in the database, the model knows about it, the query builder probably knows about it, the collection probably knows about it, and our factories know about it. This is Eloquent. You know, Eloquent isn't just our model, it's all of these things. So I don't think we should feel bad about or, or be worried about kind of sharing information around these things because they're already intertwined, they're one kind of thing. Um, and another thing is once we create this kind of invoice collection, we no longer have like a collection of invoices we have a collection, oh, we have an invoice collection. It's now like an active thing. It's, a, it's no longer passive, it's active in our domain. So, um, you should just use this when you think it's suitable. Yeah, he's cute. Um, and uh, another, so yeah, don't just like dive in like I did, just use it when you think it might be useful. Um, another cool thing you can do is actually do a similar thing with query builders. So you can actually create your own custom query builders, just like we did with the collection. And then you can move all, if you've got really big models and you want to kind of uh, get them a bit thinner, you can move all your scopes from there onto a custom query builder as well, which just kind of uh, cleans things up a little bit. Screen's gone red, I'm going over time. Okay, so I'll tweet out a few links um, about this uh, blog post that I wrote when I was kind of doing this, also how you can do this with query builders. Everyone tweet out their doggos and their pets. I want to see all the things, hashtag Laracon US, or, or US, US, <laughs> AU, whatever it is. I know what's happening. Um, awesome, and that's me, so thank you very much for having me. Really appreciate it. <laughs>